and welcome viewers to the daily space weather first thing we're looking at here is the 171 extreme view and let me take a moment to thank you all for joining us here at the smash news network least busted name in news Whew. this is 171 angstroms for the past 24 hours we've got new sunspots that are gaining complexity over here in the eastern limb we've got a coronal hole high-speed stream causing geomagnetic unrest we've got a large sunspot group down here setting and all three of those sunspots we just mentioned increase the likelihood of major solar flares let's switch to the SDO intensity gram again both of these groups have gained magnetic complexity they're both definitely beta gamma class sunspots will show you more on that a little bit later in the video here's 171 plus colorized magnetogram and let's subtract the 171 angstroms portion and just include colorized magnetogram that's yesterday plus today so far we've also seen a bit of a seismic uptick and a volcanic downtick it looks like although uptick there at Piton de la Fournaise some seismic activity increases happening there in the pre in the past few days on the Isle of Réunion Nevado del Ruiz exploding in Colombia producing a 20,000 foot ash plume Sangay and Revenador both exploding in Revenador in, in Ecuador and oh my god VolcanoDiscovery.com has changed their font and the order that the volcanoes are listed so Sangay and Ecuador both exploding Sangay and Revenador both exploding in Ecuador there we go flight level 200 over Sangay flight level 150 a 15,000 foot ash column over Revenador Saab and Kaya exploding as well in Peru 24,000 foot ash plume and yeah seismic uptick there at Pitan de la Fornese the Isle of Reunion there seeing some continuous inflation for the past seven months are we fixing for a major eruption at Pitan de la Fornese let us know in the comments we did have one significant earthquake here since yesterday there's the past 90 days and the largest quake of the past 24 was the 6.1 at Papua New Guinea there's a location of that that came in late last night Universal Time at 2239 so let's scroll up the list here some Texan earthquakes happening once again they're all of small magnitude So one six plus magnitude quake. There was a 5.0 at Tonga. And that 6.1 was actually at 126 kilometers estimated depth. So a very deep quake there. And check this one out in Hawaii. That one occurring at 1,800 meters above sea level. Let's just check the location of that. Indeed, it was directly under Mauna Loa. There's a the location of that quake. That was a 2.6 magnitude. There was also a 5.1 in Russia and a 5.4. So there's a perfect example of a foreshock. And keep in mind, folks, any earthquake can be a foreshock. Let's hope that 6.1 at Papua New Guinea was not a foreshock. Also, Greece saw a 5.3. I think that one occurred right near Crete, just off the east coast of Crete. Don't be a Cretan. Press like and subscribe. Press the notification bell if you're new to the channel. Press the share button. Leave us a comment, etc. We also did see a 5.0 at Costa Rica. All right, let's get to the top of this list. And continue on to look at ionized helium here on the closest star. That's the last 24 hours 
at 304 angstroms from SDO. We've seen the radio flux increase here quite a bit since yesterday. It's now at 130 solar flux units. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux comes from the upper chromosphere and lower corona. This area right in here, right in there. And here's the one year chart to put that in context. Radio flux now back up to 130 solar flux units. A solar flux unit is 10,000 joules of radio flux density. Space Weather Enthusiast Dashboard forecasting ongoing geomagnetic storm and unrest conditions. We may see a KP6 according to NOAA late in the day tomorrow. So we may see some great aurorae. We already are seeing some kicking off. Let us know in the comments if you've been photographing some aurora, taking videos of it, etc. Or better yet, hit us up on Twitter. We'll be happy to feature your imagery on the channel. Expecting geomagnetic unrest conditions all through the day today. Uh, well, we're expecting it through the day today. The peak tomorrow night. And continuing on into Monday, September 5th. Here's the earthly geospace out to about 12 Earth diameters for the past four hours. And we do indeed see a high pressure environment here. There is an elevated solar wind. So that's the last four hours of the space weather modeling framework. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. And this will show you the most likely places for aurorae, power line induction, pipeline, and railway induction. We'll let that play through. It should be four hours if all is going according to plan. We'll also show you the 30 minute auroral forecast after that plays through. And here's your auroral forecast for both the Borealis on the left and the Australis on the right. And we may be able to see some aurorae in the lower 48 of the U.S. here tomorrow night into Sunday morning. Fingers crossed. Let's hope that high-speed coronal hole wind stream is highly negative BZ oriented. Current conditions are geomagnetic unrest at a KP4. And for you new viewers, the planetary K index is a measurement of global geomagnetism. Each bar there representing three hours. Coming off a brief period there of KP5 geomagnetic storm and dropping back to geomagnetic unrest conditions. We have seen the solar wind further elevate here. Current conditions are about 556 kilometers per second for the velocity. Solar wind density about 9 protons per cubic centimeter. And if this top red bar, if this red line here remains positive like this, we will come back out of geomagnetic unrest conditions promptly. If we get back to a strong signal in the negative BZ territory like this signal right here, or this signal over here, then we can expect to see geomagnetic unrest or geomagnetic storm conditions return. Also, I wouldn't be surprised to see the solar wind speed get even higher than this. I'm expecting it to be over 600 at some point. That's 600 kilometers per second. Here's the GOES magnetometer, which is looking pretty spiky over the past 12 hours. That is what you would expect to see with high-speed solar plasma showing up at those geosynchronous near equatorial orbiting satellites. They're located at about 10,500 miles of altitude. And let's take a look at the top view ecliptic plane field plot. This is the heliospheric current sheet as the plasma coming out of the sun is polar. This also shows you the top view of the, the sun here. Keep in mind this is not to scale. Earth is in a north pole current sheet 
And let's go back 11 years to see what was happening about one solar cycle ago. At this point during the solar cycle 24, as you may know, solar cycles are approximately 11 years in length. So let's go back 11 years. And here it is. This is August 30th through September 3rd of 2011. So that's what was going on back then. You can see the opposite polarity there. This is showing the North Pole in the north. And back then, we had more South Pole magnetism in the north. You can see mixed fields up there 11 years ago. So each solar cycle features all kinds of different progression of the solar polar field reversal. And here's our current line of sight field plot. The north solar polar field still there largely fixated at the north solar polar geogra heliographic region. The south solar polar field has largely left, pretty much entirely left the south polar region. Here's our line of sight coronal hole plot. And the great thing about coronal holes is they show us where those fields are located. Very little magnetism there at the south solar heliographic polar region. Basically no magnetism down there. Just mixed fields. Whereas in the north, significant field density up there. So let's take a look at this in 211 angstroms. Major coronal hole there facing Earth. We're already getting high speed winds from that. We can expect that to last into two days. Again, expecting geomagnetic storm conditions late tomorrow night, late Sunday night into Monday morning. And let's move on to sunspots. Also some great plasma reorientation happening over here. This did not appear to be any kind of a coronal mass ejection. You see that, that an extra hole opening up and then closing back up as plasma attempts to reach static equilibrium. So here's a sunspot scenario. Likelihood of solar flares rising as 3089 approaches the limb. And with the complexification. Complexification, is that a word? Gaining complexity are sunspot 3092 and sunspot 3094. They're both beta gamma class sunspots. We'll show you some high res imagery of that toward the end of the video. Here's the last 24 in SDO continuum. Let's get a little closer before we show the SDO magnetogram. And let's don't forget the sunspot group down here. The sunspot group is magnetically complex as well. Again, likelihood of solar flares goes up since yesterday's video. Here's the SDO magnetogram for the last 24 hours. And there is a little bit of evolution happening of this sunspot down here. So plenty of interesting activity happening there. There's the X-ray flux over the past three days. Largest flare was a C3.8. Flaring has actually been diminishing here, certainly over the past week, as we had a very active day about six days ago. Here's the last 24 and 131 angstroms, one of the two wavelengths that takes 10 images per minute. And let's keep going, plenty of more interesting things to cover. Proton flux flatlined here over the past three days. No relativistic particles. If we see major flares, we may see some relativistic particles. I just wanted to show you our in-the-sky.org star chart. 
interesting little feature going on here. Deneb is going to come down to the horizon and sort of sweep across the horizon and then re-rise in the east. You can actually animate the star charts here. So let's just do that as Venus has just risen here and over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Rising just ahead of the sun. And it looks like Deneb is going to set here in Lehigh Valley at about 8.30. Make it quarter of nine. Nine o'clock about. And of course, Deneb, one of the most interesting objects in the sky, as it is the most, it is the brightest intrinsic object visible from our solar, solar system, the only known cosmic ray point source. It is also the north celestial pole at the other end of Earth's precessional axial wobble cycle. Yes, the pole star. And then Deneb re-rises there later this afternoon. So it only sets for a short period of time and then comes back over the horizon. If you want to make your own star chart, head to in-the-sky.org. Put in your zip code. And I like to put in the ecliptic, the galactic plane, and shade galaxy. Don't cast shade on the galaxy. It's not going to kill you. But that's where things are now over Lehigh Valley. Venus just having risen, the third brightest object in the sky. We see the third, fourth, and fifth brightest objects in the sky, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. Jupiter and Mars trade places depending on their location with respect to the Earth for the, for the fourth and fifth brightest objects. Next, a solar system forecast. We've got a crescent waxing moon. And we're about one week from full moon. Here's where things will be in a week. Venus on the opposite side of the solar system, all the other eight planets on this side of the solar system. And we'll look at some coronagraphs next. We don't see any earthly directed coronal mass ejections. The CME that you see here in this imagery is on the far side of the sun. We'll show you more detail on that in a moment. That CME right there, not earthly directed. That's yesterday's imagery. And we'll also show today's. Here's today's imagery so far. And let's go out to Stereo A at Lagrange 5 and Soho Lasco C3 at Lagrange 1. We paused it here as Stereo A is kind of lacking in, in data right now. It's well behind. It's missing about 15 hours of data. But that CME there, not on the Earth side, it's all to the south and on the opposite side of the sun. So Earth would be off on this line for your new viewers. From Stereo A's perspective, it would be off to the right. From the Soho Lasco C3's perspective, it would be behind you. A little bit of a CME happening there, again, on the far side of the sun. It might look a little bit like a halo, but it is not earthly directed. And now we're back to El Taide, Spain's ground-based solar observatory, looking at some filaments and huge filaments over here in the southeast. If we're going to see a major CME, coronal mass ejection, well, that's a lot of filamentary material there hanging out in the corona. So those dark absorption features could find themselves releasing those filaments there suspended by magnetic fields defying the sun's gravity. And here's the GOES-16 SUVI for the past about two and a half hours. You can see that dark feature there. That's not a coronal hole. That's that huge filament that we just showed. Once again, there it is from the ground-based Hydrogen Alpha Telescope at El Taide, Spain. And there it is in ionized helium. Here's the last 24 in 171 plus 193 angstroms. One of the better composite wavelengths.
and let's move into the realm of bonus features. So we're starting out bonus features by looking at satellite charging hazards here in the satellite's community dashboard. And there you go, we've got some significant surface charging hazards over Mexico and the Central Pacific. Those surface charging hazards caused by low energy electrons building up on the outside of satellites. So we could see some errors from that as we do see some portions in the red there. Electron flux here kind of low as we typically see with coronal hole high speed streams. Here's the forecast. And I would think this green box here, I would think this is going to be still low until the coronal hole high speed stream ends and then right, rise up. That's NOAA's forecast for relativistic electrons. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. Here's the one year graph to put it in context. The greater than two mega electron volt electron fluence. You can look at that yourself if you like at solon.info, solon.info. We'll also show an animation of the F ionosphere layer, the region of highly charged particles in the upper thermosphere, the F flare of the ionosphere in many ways, the bridge between Earth and space. There's a lot of stuff shaken up there. This is the vibrational frequency in megahertz, millions of vibrations per second. I don't know why it stopped playing, but let's go to the anomaly gram next. It stopped playing because reasons. So we've got some rapid swings there happening around South America. The weakest part of the Earth's magnetosphere is right about here. The South Atlantic anomaly now over the South American continent. And you will see regular rapid swings happening in that area. That's anomaly in megahertz from a 30 day median. And remember folks, starting things out right in September with geomagnetic storm and geomagnetic unrest conditions. September is the most geomagnetically active month of the year. So there's 1015 universal time, ionogram and anomalygram. Total electron content forecast shows us the free electrons between your GPS satellite and handset. The most likely places for GPS errors are the red portions of that. And things are looking fairly normal when it comes to the total electron content forecast. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. Feel free to pause the video in this image. Distances are shown here in miles. Please support the channel by clicking our links. Our homepage is smashomash.com. And welcome to the Neo Renaissance. We like citing facts and debunking nonsense on the channel. There's plenty of nonsense on YouTube to debunk. Much of it is low-hanging fruit. We don't spend too much time doing it these days. As we're pretty busy over here at the Smash News Network, Least Busted Name and News. So please visit our links. Help support the channel in any way that you're able and willing to do so. One of the links you can find is to my SureMed link. If you want to improve your personal health, do it by becoming a member of the American Better Health Organization, otherwise known as SureMed. The base membership gets you all sorts of discounts. Doctors by phone, counselors by phone, virtual veterinarians, health advocate solutions to negotiate lower bills if you've run up medical bills, discounts on dental and vision services, retail mail order pharmacy, discounts on vitamins. It's certainly worth the 20 bucks a month. Again, links on the homepage to that as well as links to the Smash team. 
If you want to support the channel via subscription services and get some additional content, become a member of the Smash Team at smashomash.com slash smash team. We had to replace Patreon with a superior website, our own, and so we decided to create the Smash Team site. We are still on Patreon as well, and we're on Twitter. Don't forget to follow us over there. If you don't have a Twitter account, create a Twitter account. There's all kinds of stuff you won't see anyplace else besides on Twitter. And if you've got imagery of the Aurora or anything else, hit us up on Twitter, drop us a message, put up a tweet, and put it at smash mash We interact over there quite a bit. We also do regularly stream live to Twitch at twitch.tv slash smash mash Thanks to our new followers over on Twitch. And there's a sale going on. A sale going on at the entire Redbubble store. Today's featured product is one that we don't normally feature. By the way, these are listed in order of best selling. And of course, there are words depicted there that we are unable to say because this video is going on to YouTube. Today's featured product is forgive, remember, and hold accountable. And don't forget to enter the promo code not just to save 20% on any orders because it's not just t shirts, it's all kinds of different products. Again, save 20% store wide through September 8th by entering the promo code not just. I'll tell you what's not just is a lack of accountability. Have you noticed Banana Republic esque nonsense going on all around the world? A complete lack of accountability for utterly corrupt, inept, and indeed harmful decisions made by various different bureaucrats, whether they're corporate bureaucrats or government bureaucrats. Well, accountability always comes, folks. Accountability always comes. It's impossible to avoid it forever. And remember, folks, holding a grudge is like ingesting poison and expecting the other person to die. So don't do it. Forgive instead. But don't forget that's so 2019. Forgive. Remember. Hold accountable. Make Earth not suck again. Because accountability always comes. So pick up some merch if you'd like to support the channel that way. Tell your friends and foes about the positive messages that we're <laughs> citing over on the Red Bubble Shop. Mansa, make America not suck again. Mensa, make Earth not suck again. And again, don't forget to enter the promo code, not just to save 20% on all orders through September 8th. And press like, subscribe, share, press the notification bell if you're new to the channel. Check our playlists for videos besides space weather and meteorology segments. We've been putting them all together because of popular demand. And don't be gaslit by nonsense by big tech. Did you know that there are lawsuits all around People are suing the White House and suing big tech because of the propagation of disinformation. Yeah, yeah, it's I'll just reiterate accountability always comes. Getting back to the sun, here's the latest intensity gram and latest colorized magnetogram. And let's start off by going around the horn here. That sunspot still quite magnetically complex and becoming more and more likely to produce major flares as it approaches the limb. It's certainly a beta gamma class. It is beta gamma delta class. Let's take a look at this sunspot. Actually, we can get both of these in the same frame here, I think. There we go. Those are both now beta gamma class sunspot groups. And this group up here is now a beta gamma class class sunspot group. So up here you can see a leading north pole umbra, trailing south pole umbra that makes it beta gamma class. All of these features increase the likelihood of solar flares. So a significant increase in the radio flux here since yesterday as well. And let's bring up the 
composite imagery from SDO from yesterday and today. That's 304 angstroms as well as 211 and 171 angstroms. Keep in mind, folks, 171 angstroms usually shown in a gold color. Here it's shown in blue. 304 is still shown in red. And 211 angstroms is what we normally show the corona holes in. That's usually purple. It's actually green. You can see the extended corona there in green. And check out that little plasma reorientation happening there. And shout out to Gemma for bringing this to my attention in the middle of the day yesterday. And it's time to continue on to our meteorology segment. So once again, thanks for everybody tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name of news, where we cite facts. We don't talk about, we don't do propaganda. We don't do grifting. We don't say, the end is near, repent now or you're going to die. Because our finest days lie ahead. And there's no reason to fear monger. So here's what's going on in the northern hemisphere. That's the likely auroral oval here. Aurora likely there over lots of Alaska. We hope you've got clear skies. And here is the likely aurora oval for the aurora australis. Again, if you do have imagery or videos of the aurora from either side of the planet, drop us a line on Twitter. We'll feature it on the channel. So here are our normal wind maps. There is the surface wind scenario. Got a strong system here. 75 mile per hour winds at least on the eastern side of that tropical typhoon there, right near Taiwan. And here are the jet streams of that portion of the planet. We actually see a jet stream scale counterclockwise rotation there and a clockwise rotation off to its to its east. Seems like an upper level high there that may be pushing it toward the Asian continent. Here are the jet streams of the Americas. And here are the surface winds. We've got a hurricane up here in the North Atlantic. We'll show you a little bit more about that a little bit later. Here are the surface winds of the central world. Jet streams of the central world. As we try to provide a global picture, as we move from space down to planet Earth. A backward jet stream here over the Indian Ocean, northern African continent, and the eastern Atlantic. Continuing on to our weather.gov map, if your county is lit, click your county. We do see some flash flood warnings in places like southern Missouri and portions of Mississippi. Texas still expecting a little bit of flooding and hot temperatures there over the left coast. Hot, hot temperatures. Excessive heat warnings over much of Calif most of California. Red flag warnings over most all, nearly all of Montana some dry, windy conditions up there. Again, if your county's lit, head to weather.gov and click your county. Here is your temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius based on the GFS model for the next 72 hours. Again, that's your 72-hour GFS temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. Southern Texas getting some cold weather. as the northwest of the U.S. seeing some temperatures 12 to 16 degrees Celsius above normal in many large portions of the country. So here's this uh, hurricane. I don't really see any hurricane force winds here. Windy does often underestimate, I think. Most I can get is about 50 miles per hour there. Let's check the gusts. 
We are seeing gusting up to hurricane force. I thought I saw 75 miles an hour there. Anyway, let's zoom out a little bit here and do the European forecast for how this thing will move. It's just kind of stagnating there at the moment. Not really moving much at all. As a strong low forms to the north, I mean to the southwest of Ireland. Check out that low, Yowzers. That is a serious low there. Anyway, that's the European forecast through 1500 Universal Time Monday. It looks like it actually did intensify there a little bit. There's the GFS forecast. Not intensifying as much under the GFS forecast. Oh yeah, the European forecast expecting a major intensification there in the next couple days. Just not a lot of movement. Anyway, there is your sustained wind map based on the, on, on the European forecast through Monday at 3 p.m. That is, I believe that is local time. That is local time for here in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Eastern Daylight Time. So here's your lightning mapper from the NASA GOES satellite. Long band of lightning there stretching all the way from eastern Canada down to down into Iowa and Missouri. Here's your real-time lightning map. That's going to show you lightning for the last hour. And we do have some terrestrial strikes here. North of Louisville, west of Nashville, and in northern Arkansas. Some active cells there. Next time you hear thunder, check out lightningmaps.org. It could save your bacon. Don't get struck by lightning. The likelihood of surviving that is actually kind of low. Most people that are struck by lightning die. Don't get struck by lightning. Here's your US Doppler radar map. Ground-based system showing vertical motion of water droplets. And unfortunately, it's cloudy over most of the populated portions of Alaska, it looks like, as there's rain. And here's the radar animation for the lower 48. Here's a shortwave radiation showing clouds and fog from the satellite perspective. And here is water vapor. This should clarify how these systems will move a little bit. Clear skies over Utah as there is dry, massive air overhead. Why is dry air more massive than moist air? Wouldn't you think the moist air would be heavier? Well, not really. It's because the molecular mass of nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen is N2, is more massive than atmospheric water vapor. So realizing that dry air is more massive than moist air does help with meteorology. This is your recap, the US Doppler radar. Shortwave radiation. Yes, clear skies are more massive than moist skies. This is why you see high pressure on a clear blue sky day and lower pressure during a hurricane. And last but not least, there is the water vapor map that should help to clarify things. Once again, thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, and may that solar wind be at your back.